Hey everyone, uh, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create some nice uh, and professional looking 3D uh, renders of your product. Uh, so as you can see right here, we got uh, some samples uh, that I worked earlier on. Um, these are some renders that I created yesterday. Uh, I think they're, they, uh, in my opinion, they look pretty good. Uh, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve uh, similar results in Blender. Um, uh, in a matter of uh, minutes. So yeah, first thing first, <coughs> uh, what I do is I always get an HDRI. You can get uh, free HDRIs from Polygon Heaven, I think it's called. Uh, it's a website where there are uh, uh, HDRIs available and three models available for free uh, without any licensing uh, required. So uh, I think that's a good place to get uh, your HDRIs. So, once you got your uh, an HDRI, what you can do is you can come here uh, and get to, uh, click on new. Uh, I'm sorry, open. You can uh, go and select your HDRI. Make sure you get something that has some definition. A studio HDRI, I don't think is. In my opinion, a studio HDRI with little details is not a good fit for something like this. But um, you can be as artistic and creative with it as much as you want. Um, I got two right here, so I'm going to just select one of these and see how that works. So, in my opinion, this uh, looks good. Uh, yeah, I think this looks good. We, are, uh, get, uh, we need the HDRI just to get some reflections right here. We don't need that for the lighting. We're going to do some lighting uh, in order to pop this 3D model a little bit. This is uh, an Apple Watch Ultra, I think, yeah. Uh, I created this model uh, a couple of days ago. I uh, textured it. Uh, if you wanted to uh, get this exact uh, model, I think it will be available uh, by the time this video is going to be dropped on CG Trader. So if you want, you can check it out. So once you got an HDRI, uh, make sure that your 3D model has uh, proper reflections. So you can also rotate it a little bit to uh, get a feel for the scene. Uh, I think this looks pretty good. What you're going to do now is uh, create a sort of a backdrop or uh, a floor in order to uh, be able to create a background. In order to do that, what you can do is you can uh, get a plane, scale it real big, uh, and uh, maybe move it a little bit. Make sure it's nice and big so that you won't be able to see the corners of it. Sorry. Uh, make sure you extrude and uh, you move uh, upwards a little bit, just like that. I'm, I'm going to add some loop cuts right here and I'm going to subdivide this a uh, couple of iterations. Uh, right click, shade smooth. I think that's good enough. What you're going to do now is Shift A in order to add a camera. Click zero on your keyboard and click in in order to uh, get this toolbar right here. Go to view, click on camera to view. Now you can move back a little bit and adjust your frame. I think in my opinion a wider lens looks better because uh, there's less uh, sort of perspective distortion. So make sure you go for a higher focal length right here. Something around 110, 100, 120 is a sweet spot in my opinion. What you're gonna do now is you can uh, uh, compose your shot a little bit better uh, by doing this. It's important to get a proper resolution for the thing. I'm, I'm sticking with 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080. I think that's a good spot. Also make sure you uh, adjust your render settings. I'm using Cycles and uh, I got uh, GPU compute, of course. Uh, I got 124 or uh, 1024 max samples right there. 0 0.01 noise threshold. Nothing uh, special about that. So. What I'm going to do, and it's also important to go for a high contrast look because this is going to make your 3D model pop very nicely. If you go for something like medium contrast, this is going to look pretty flat. And this is not some 
junky contrast. This is uh, the curve type contrast. Uh, Blind Guru already talked about this in one of his videos, so you can check it out. Uh, but uh, it really uh, creates a nice look. Uh, don't worry if it looks a little bit dark because we are going to work on that. I think I'm seeing some. Uh, let me show you in the actual uh, render. No, I think this is good. Uh, I saw some uh, accents, uh, purple accents right there, but I think they're gone in the actual render. Okay, the important thing is, uh, right here is the composition. Make sure you take your time with the composition and adjust your composition in order to make it look balanced and good. So make sure there's a right and left is well justified. Okay, what you're gonna do now is you can, um, put a certain color or shade to your background. I, I always go for a sort of a neutral color. You can go with white, black, gray, whatever, because um, these are the colors that are gonna really help get the attention to the actual product and um, it's gonna help the product pop a little bit more. For this instance, I'm gonna go with something darker because uh, I think that looks better since we have uh, some uh, aluminum frames right here and um, textures. I'm going to go some, uh, with something a little bit darker. I'm going to reduce the specula and uh, make it a little bit rough. This looks quite dark. The important thing here is the lighting. If you sort of uh, take your time with lighting, it's going to really enhance the look right here. And there are some things you can always consider when lighting a product. One of those is always have an overhead light because that's what looks natural. There's always light coming from above us in the real world. And that's what's gonna make the product look natural. So make sure you add a nice little light from above. Shift A, go to light and add an area light. What I like to do whenever I'm lighting a product is use a second monitor for a different viewport. But since uh, this tutorial, I'm going to split this monitor just like that and have this as my uh, preview right here. And I'm going to be adjusting the light in this other frame, uh, viewport right here. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to head over to a 2D viewport, move this up, and you can see that we have a nice little highlight right here, which really helps the product pop a bit more and uh, it creates a nice little contrast with the background right there. So that's a good uh, place to put it, but we have some harsh shadows right here. In order to uh, reduce that, what you can do is you can always increase the size of the uh, light a little bit and also maybe decrease the power, but I think that increment of the size helped with the diffusion of the light right there. What I want now is some uh, light to uh, pop these edges right here or an accent light and in order to do that shift a again at a point light and uh, you can always uh, adjust it to your liking what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make sure i get a nice little rim right there and uh, get some contrast there but that this also creates a problem that uh, it creates this uh, harsh highlight right here, which is not ideal for product shot because it creates a stress point or a focal point on something that is not necessar necessarily interesting. So uh, in order to fix that, again, we can also always you know, increase the size of the light a little bit, and that, I think, works pretty good for this instance again. <coughs> I think this is not bright enough and in order to uh, make this brighter you can always increase the con uh, the power sorry uh, here in order to make that uh, pop a little bit more but you can see we, uh, we get a harsh contrast here but this doesn't look unpleasant because it's a little bit more spread out and uh, uh, it really makes these uh, holes right here because since they are holes and they're dark to pop a little bit more and I think that's a good uh, thing to do in this case but uh, we have this weird shadow right here, which is not ideal in my opinion. I want to have a sort of a balanced look uh, where uh, our model is lit from one side nice and smoothly. And in order to fix that, we can 
maybe uh, move this a little bit to the side and increase the size a little bit. Maybe decrease the power since uh, this is a little bit too bright. And I think that looks pretty good. But we've lost the edge right there. In order to get that back and have this pleasant look, you can always shift D in order to duplicate the light and move it closer in order to isolate that. And you can get rid of the uh, multiple importance, which is going to get rid of the reflection on this and only isolate the light to that specific part. You can maybe increase the uh, power a bit as well in order to create a nice little uh, harsh or crisp look right there. Here's uh, something that is missing in this, and that is this back part right here is blending into the background. And in order to, again, add contrast and make that look good, you can always an add another accent light. In order to do that, again, you can always add a different light, but uh, what I like to do is duplicate the same light, Shift D again, move this back a little bit, and uh, always remember that uh, smaller lights create harsher shadows and uh, crisper looks, but they also uh, create this harsh look wh which is not pleasant, uh, but in certain cases like this, where you, uh, whenever you want to add an accent light, it is ideal to go with a smaller light. So make sure you decrease the radius for your uh, for uh, your accent light. So we get this nice little crisp look right here. I think that's pretty much ideal. Look, we also get a nice little edge light right here, but I think this is not the best place to add it. I'm going to add uh, a separate one for that, and uh, in order to uh, get rid of that, we can move this a little bit to the side in order to isolate that right there. We still get a little bit of it, and but that's fine since we are going to add another light anyway, so uh, it's not a big deal. We can move another light, Shift D, in order to duplicate it, and we get this nice little crispy glow right here from this uh, met metallic part right here, which in my opinion looks pretty good. But here's another thing that we need to consider. Adding contrast to every specific part is not a good thing. There are certain places where you want it to blend in. For example, this part right here. This is a symmetrical part. What you need to do is only uh, make sure a certain portion of it is visible to, in order to get give the viewer an idea for the geometry of the 3D model. But you don't want to make it look like a blueprint where every single part of it is crisp and clear. That does not look good. You want to make it look natural. So use those creative muscles and uh, work this out and uh, you can always play around with this, use different color combinations and stuff, but uh, in my opinion neutral colors are a go-to for product shots since uh, you want to really uh, focus on the actual colors of the product and not mix and match different colors in order to not lose the feel for the actual colors of the product. Here's another problem, we get a harsh shadow right here where um, in my opinion doesn't look good. In order to fix that, maybe we can increase the radius a little bit and decrease the power. Use more lights. This is an important thing to consider. More lights, better? No, not necessarily better, but more lights gives you more flexibility and uh, stuff like this. So make sure you are generous with the use of your lights in your 3D scenes. So yeah. I think this looks pretty good for now. In my opinion, we can uh, add some light right here in order to add some glow to this part or maybe some contrast, in other words. So I'm going to duplicate this, move this to the side, and uh, maybe decrease the radius in order to make the thing a little bit more crisp so we get this nice little uh, breakage or uh, separation right here. I think that looks good. We get a nice little glow in this curvature right here, which in my opinion looks very good. But this part right here doesn't look good, so make sure you adjust 
you light in order to really uh, get the perfect look that you're looking for. I think uh, this is pretty much it for something like this. I think the composition could be adjusted a little bit. Make sure you adjust your composition. If something doesn't look good, adjust it. I think this we got a little bit extra slack on top. It's not the actual three mile, but uh, it's the composition that makes it look like that. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so the watch surface faces up a little bit. I think this looks good. You can leave a little bit of extra slack right here if you want to add maybe add specifications, a text or do some sort of copywriting magic in order to sell the product if you're doing this for an actual product. So yeah, I think this is it for uh, today's video. You can go ahead and render this out and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something new. Uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Take care.